Hello and welcome. I'm Saeed from StoryPlanet.net. Dive right into the essence of the most captivating books without reading them cover to cover. Whether you're on the go, at the gym, or just relaxing at home, we offer you a unique and enriching listening experience. Today, we are exploring the book, How to Smell a Rat, a creation by Ken Fisher and Lara Hoffmans. How to Smell a Rat equips you with the tools to steer clear of financial fraud and lists the favorite tricks of notorious fraudsters. Before we delve into these revelations, it's interesting to note that Ken Fisher is the founder and leader of Fisher Investments, a global financial firm. He wrote bestsellers such as The Only Three Questions That Count and The Ten Roads to Riches, and has authored the popular Forbes Portfolio Strategy column for 25 years. Lara Hoffmans, who works with Fisher, co-authored his books and manages content for Fisher Investments along with contributing to MarketMinder.com. The text, How to Smell a Rat, is copyrighted by Kenneth Fisher and Lara Hoffmans in 2009 by John Wiley and Sons. Permission is required to share the text with unauthorized parties. With seven key ideas to unveil, brace yourself for a deep dive into this captivating book on storyplane.net. To start, learn how to identify and avoid financial scams and fraudsters. The text discusses the devastating impact of Ponzi schemes where individuals like Bernie Madoff and Alan Stanford dishonestly steal billions of dollars from hard-working people. It emphasizes the importance of protecting investments, recognizing con artists, and ensuring the safety of one's money. It highlights the warning signs of fraud, the tactics used by fraudsters like hiring anti-fraud lobbyists, and the limitations of regulatory bodies like the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission in preventing such financial crimes. Key idea number one. Avoid having your investment advisor also control your assets to safeguard against potential conflicts of interest and ensure the safety of your investments. Investment specialist Bernard Madoff defrauded clients of 65 billion. To avoid falling victim to investment fraud, utilize a custodian, a financial institution that safeguards your assets and provides oversight. Custodians act as a buffer between your money and financial advisors, ensuring transparency and minimizing the risk of theft or mismanagement. Beware of financial advisors who act as custodians as they could potentially exploit access to your funds. Trusting a custodian provides security and peace of mind in your investments. Key idea number two. Be cautious if an investment advisor consistently has high investment returns. Be cautious of money managers promising exceptionally high returns, as it is uncommon to consistently beat the market by a large margin. Most markets are volatile, and extremes in returns are more common. Even successful investors like Warren Buffett have periods of underperformance, so beware of overly consistent track records. Key idea number three. Advisors should simplify investment strategies for easy understanding. Investment jargon can be confusing for beginners, but it's crucial to understand any strategy before investing. If your financial advisor uses complex jargon without clear explanations, it may be a red flag. Differentiate between tactics, tools, and strategy plan in investing. Don't fall for flashy tactics disguised as a real strategy. Ensure you comprehend the investment plan fully before committing funds. Key idea number four, caution against flashy displays or exclusivity. Bernie Madoff's funds were promoted as exclusive, requiring introduction by a trusted source to invest. Exclusivity alone is not a reliable indicator of an advisor's credibility. Gimmicks like catering to an elite clientele or extravagant displays may serve as distractions. Legitimate reasons for exclusivity could include strategy, efficiency based on investment thresholds but should be explained to clients. Over-the-top expenses may suggest inefficiency or distraction, and a trustworthy advisor focuses on client interests, not luxury. Key idea number five. Charity donations and good reputation do not necessarily indicate trustworthiness in an advisor. Financial advisors do not work for free as they will get paid one way or another. 
Advisors may receive compensation through product recommendations, transaction costs, or other means. This can create conflicts of interest and potentially lead to fraudulent behavior, as seen in examples like Bernie Madoff and Alan Stanford. Charitable donations can also be used to enhance credibility and reputation, even by fraudulent individuals. Key idea number six, relying on a friend's recommendation or shared social circles alone is insufficient to thoroughly assess an advisor's credibility and suitability. It is not advisable to choose a financial advisor solely based on recommendations from friends due to the potential lack of due diligence on their part. Con artists exploit trust from referrals and affiliations, as seen in the case of Bernie Madoff. It's crucial to scrutinize the advisor thoroughly, regardless of any affiliations like church, club, or alumni associations, as these can create false senses of trust. Fraudsters may exploit such affiliations for personal gain. Key idea number seven. Although the SEC can provide assistance, the responsibility for ensuring the safety of your money lies with you ultimately. The SEC's mission is to protect investors from fraud by regulating investment advisors. Companies with over $110 million worth of assets must register with the SEC and disclose relevant information. The SEC conducts surprise inspections and enforces securities laws, but struggles to catch all fraud due to limited resources and the complexity of scrutinizing all documents. Therefore, investors are advised to thoroughly research their financial advisors themselves. In conclusion, crooked financial advisors use various tactics to deceive clients. By being aware of these strategies, individuals can prevent falling victim to financial fraud. Further recommended reading is The Big Short by Michael Lewis, which examines the causes of a major financial crash and how certain individuals were able to profit from it. Feedback on the content can be sent to remember storyplanet.net. Thank you for listening to this summary. If you enjoyed this exploration, we invite you to discover other fascinating books on storyplanet.net. Don't wait any longer. A multitude of books, stories, and knowledge await you there. See you soon on storyplanet.net.